Hey gang, so we're looking at blocks in the west. You guessed it, you did. First up, you smart guys. Green blocks, blue blocks, black blocks, no red blocks. Must be blocks in the west. Oh, okay. So, let's just get something off the chest. Actually, you know what? I'll leave that for another video because uh, I don't want to deal with other people's drama right now. What I do want to tell you is that these cool... Uh, uh, Smaller scenario maps are actually blow-ups of the full map with larger hexes. So as you can see, you can stack uh, three or four more uh, counters in there pretty easily, right? So you've got, uh, here's one with three three in it. You know, there's still room and you can see everything, see what's going on. So that's all kind of cool. Uh, and when you have a combat and you have six or eight units in the, in the hex, it, sure, it's going to be crowded, but that's okay. Uh, we, we expect that. The great thing about it though, about uh, blocks in the west that I do like, and blocks in the east in fact, is that a combat, uh, you're not leaving hexes piled up with 8 or 10 blocks. At the end of combat, someone is leaving that hex, either the attacker or the defender, and then they will uh, you know, re-engage at another point. Someone is going to retreat or die. Oh, I like that aspect of the game. Uh, so you don't end up with a mass of units just sitting there. Anyway, so here, here we go. What we're doing here, we're playing the Battle of the Bulge uh, scenario. Since we're racing up on that particular event historically, I thought that might be kind of uh, cool to have a look at it from a uh, block game perspective and see how this system holds up. I've had uh, a read of the rules. I did look at the rules quite a while ago uh, in a you know very weak effort to help Imam Wale uh, attempt to, you know, um, refine the rules. Uh, it wasn't much help, but uh, I had read them. But I was reading them from a proofreading perspective, not from, uh, you know, a, a rules absorption. So, this might take a little while to play and be a little disjointed, but we'll see how we do with it all. Anyway, uh, I've got all the blocks stickered that we need. Uh, some of them I didn't sticker because I don't envision uh, these two fortresses here. Here's a fortress. Here's what a fortress looks like. Uh, let me just... Oh, I haven't got the camera on a stand, so I have to focus it with one finger. Anyway, that's a fortress, trust me. All right. And nothing's going to happen up here. Uh, we're playing the bulge scenario, uh, so the, the turn... I don't even know how, long, how many turns this thing goes for, actually. Doesn't matter. We'll look at that in a minute. And I don't envision that we're going to carry on all the way through uh, to the end of the game. We're just going to play out, uh, you know, three or four months of, of action here. The interesting thing about the scenario is that, obviously, things don't happen in isolation. So it's not just what's going on in the bulge, it's what's going on across the rest of the line. And historically, that's going to matter. You know, are the, are the Germans going to, you know, thin the line somewhere else around Cologne or are these areas up here? Uh, so they can reinforce the bulge push if it goes well. Uh, the the British going to uh, launch a counter attack to sl uh, to slow down what's going on uh, in the south. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Or the, or the Americans just going to kick some ass and just take names. We don't know. We're just going to find out that soon. Hey, look at his Monty. Woohoo! Hello, Monty. Whoa, Monty. I have an idea. Let's find a bridge too far. All right, talk to you soon.